Hey, and welcome to the Upgrade School Marketing Podcast. I am Matt Sol, I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications at Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall School. And I'm Angie Ward, founder and president of Enroll Media Group, a digital marketing agency for schools. And here we are, Angie, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's Friday. I am ready for the weekend. How are you doing? I am doing great too. It is uh, while we're recording this right now, we're actually um, at our school here. We are a day away from graduation. So tomorrow is our graduation. So right now we are, you know, we're checking everybody's middle names to make sure they're correctly listed in our program. <laughs> and we're, uh, you know, we're going through all the, all the, the pre-graduation chaos, but uh, exciting. It's exciting to, to be able to, especially this year, to kind of go back to a a more normal graduation than we've had for the past three years. So it's yeah, exciting. that's great. These kids need that, that graduation ceremony. I know I've, you know, it's funny. It's the time of year where um, I don't hear from our clients, our partner schools a lot because it's all hands on deck. It seems when it's graduation time. Um, yep. And then once that winds down, it'll be marketing, right? Cause marketing is always on at these schools. It's one of those things that school marketing um, can never really stop. Um, which is why I think this is going to be uh, such a great podcast for busy school marketers. True. Yeah, you 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 uh, nailed the 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 key phrase right there. What our tagline? The <laughs> I think that works. I think the podcast for busy school marketers. I think I think that's going to be our our tagline. I think you got it. So yeah. uh, it's exactly yeah. And I think the summertime for sure. It's it's a big shift. Here we turn into a summer camp, so that becomes a big part of of it. But also. A lot of the bigger projects of you know the magazines and the view books and webs re redoing the website going through all that so um i do agree that that this is going to be a really good resource to to talk to people who are experts in a lot of those areas for school marketers to get those projects going to kick off the year right and then as we get into the year i think we're going to have a lot of those really kind of specific things about you know based on the year cycle of open houses and getting applications in and tours and the acceptance and the revisit days. So I'm excited to really kind of to frame out a whole year and cycle for somebody who's a busy school marketer to give them the information to help in all those stages. So it's exciting. And our first one right now, our, our interview today with Brendan Schneider is somebody who hopefully we get to talk to a lot throughout this because he's super knowledgeable in so many areas um, in digital marketing and SEO. And today we're talking to him specifically around inbound marketing. Yeah. And inbound marketing, I mean, it's such a big concept, but I love how Brendan is able to just break it down and unpack it in sort of bite-sized chunks for school marketers, because it's so important um, for everybody to be thinking about, and not just school marketers, but everybody in enrollment management and leadership. Um, so I think this conversation is going to be especially helpful for any new school marketers who are like, wait, how does inbound marketing really apply to my job? Or even the seasoned professionals who are just thinking about um, better ways to really identify their uh, student or prospective parent personas or how to really attract and engage them through different methods online without just sort of bombarding them with advertisements. So those are some of the topics we're going to break down in this conversation, which is exciting. Great. Now let's get right into it. All right. Let's get into our talk with uh, Brendan Schneider of Schneider B Media. Brendan, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. So Brendan, just to introduce, Brendan is the owner of Schneider B Media. It's a digital media agency for schools. He's a leader in inbound marketing for schools. He hosts workshops. He has blog posts. He has podcasts. He has hosting virtual conferences. Um, you know, we were just talking about it. We see Brendan all over here on LinkedIn, on Facebook, uh, your emails. He signed up for his, his great emails. He is always putting out um, amazing stuff that's helpful to school marketers and to admissions people. So we're super excited to have him here and to talk about in, uh, inbound marketing in particular. So uh, welcome, Brendan. Thanks. It's, it's good to be on the show. I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah, we're excited as well, um, especially about this topic. This is a topic I personally love, but why don't we start off high level? I mean, do you want to just take a minute or two to kind of talk about what inbound marketing is in general, in case there's any new school marketers listening today who haven't really um, executed an inbound marketing campaign and maybe what the difference is between inbound and outbound marketing? Yeah, it's, it's a great question, great place to start. Um, I like to describe this by going over what it isn't. So 
um, if you think about outbound marketing or um, sometimes called interruption marketing or traditional marketing. And the idea is uh, those marketing efforts interrupt your pleasure. So a radio ad would interrupt a radio show or a print ad you're reading or you're right, you get the idea. And the problem with that is that um, people don't pay attention to those anymore. And there are technologies that remove those things. So DVR or satellite radio or on-demand things. Um, and then the idea of inbound, which was originally coined by HubSpot. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, guys. They, they used a magnet a lot. So, you know, you would draw people to you. And you really do that through search engines. And, and I think as we talk about this, we'll talk about Google just because they're the big dog. But it's really any search engine. So I hope that gives a little uh, background or description to what inbound is. To use you as an example, uh, Brendan. So, you know, as a marketing person, so I'm, I am the marketing director at Chapel Hill, Chauncey Hall, and uh, I'm sure you guys are the same. The amount of emails I get, cold emails I get for, for things of, you know, oh, we'll help you get more students through this and we'll get this and, um, you know, we can write your blogs and just these emails that are just coming out of nowhere and sort of the, the disruption marketing that you're talking about, where you just get this. And I, I get very excited to spam report and unsubscribe and, and all of that to any, any of these things that come in. But it's this, um, this sort of intrusive emails that are coming in for that versus when I have something coming up and I'm, email, I'm searching on Google to say, you know, school marketing, open house marketing techniques, and then things like your site pop up that have useful resources where I'm now going in and I'm seeing a blog post or seeing a video or seeing a pod or listening to a podcast where you put out this information that I was looking for and now I'm coming to you and seeing that. So I feel like I get to see that as a marketing person directly in searching for school marketing. So one, you always are showing up in that. So, so, so great work in that, but it's, it's good to see it kind of in work. Yeah. Thank you. And, and Angie's blog shows up as well. Shout out. It's to Angie. true. That's but, right. But it's, it's Matt, that's the exact general, that's the theory behind it. And then, and then to go a couple steps further is that you find that content and then you engage with my uh, brand or a school brand, <clears throat> and then, you know, I like, can trust them. So, you know, eventually there's some sort of sale or, uh, you know, interaction at the end. So for a school, and this is where, I don't know if you want to go down the rabbit hole of a blog versus a news feed. But like, this is where schools have a hard time with their blogs, that the blog is written, it's not about the school. It's yep. about prospective family and solving their problems and challenges. Mm -hmm. So you had a challenge, that blog shows up, and then they go, oh, this is from ABC Academy. Um, and then I always recommend schools have kind of a soft sell in terms of that blog post, like help that family. And then they go, oh, this is ABC Academy. And then, you know, it goes from there. So that's, that's basically the idea. Exactly. That's yeah, great. that makes a lot of sense. You know, be a thought leader in the space, help solve those problems. But then, oh, by the way, here's how we're helping parents with those problems, kind of subtly at the yeah. end. Yeah. Um, would you mind giving us um, kind of a couple examples of how to get started with a strong inbound marketing strategy for your school, whether it's by way of blog optimizing your website like where does a school start when it comes yeah. to inbound marketing and kind of working on that checklist it, it's such a that's a really good question it's a big question angie so i'll go through at a high level and then we could we could uh dive deep in on anything you want the first thing and and um i share this from making mistakes <laughs> so so i didn't do this this way and if i could go back and do it i would do it this way so the first thing i actually would do is i would um go buy the inbound marketing book that the, the founders of HubSpot wrote, Brian Halligan and Darmesh Shaw. And I do put an asterisk here that you do not have to have HubSpot to do inbound. I love HubSpot, it helps, but you don't have to have it. Mm -hmm. So, but I would still recommend buying that book. Um, and then my tip is to buy one for you to read and then buy one or two for the decision makers at your school so that um, those people, whether it's your head of school or the director of something, understand what you're trying to do. So read that book. And then the five steps, right? Personas, keywords, SEO, content, and then social. 
and, and really start to go through those and do it for one persona. Um, you know, I always say this every time I speak or have an interview like this, if you're not using personas in your marketing, just start there, just, mm -hmm. just start there. So, you know, and a persona is just a semi-fictional representation of your ideal prospective family. Think about that. Who is that person um, that you want to market to and, and then go from there, you know? So, so here's an example. Uh, one of the personas we used originally was a woman named Ann Ramsey and doesn't exist. But what would Ann, we knew a bunch of things about her. What would Ann type into Google and we would want our school to show up? So you're thinking about keywords, you're thinking about SEO. And then as you go into content, you know, content takes many forms. We're just mentioning a blog. You know, what content can you create based on keywords or helping Ann? And then the thing I like schools to also understand is that we spend so much time talking about social media um, and like that's all there is. Social is a small part of it. And if you're not doing these other things, um, I've learned the hard way. Social media by itself is not going to solve your enrollment challenges. So, but as part of an inbound marketing strategy, it, it can be pretty effective. So I, I threw a lot out there. I hope that's what you're looking for. But <laughs> no, no, no. No, that's great. That. Yeah. Can, I, can I add a, um, so for the, the personas too, one of the things we did that was really helpful was one, talking with admissions who have, you know, yeah thousands of interviews under their belts in exactly what these parents are coming in at that time and what they're asking and what they're looking for. Um, that, that is huge. And then the other is we added um, to our inquiry form, everybody who comes in, we added the question, um, what's most important to you in a school? So everybody who comes in and, and fills out an inquiry at that moment is asking, is answering that question. And the answer to that question over years, you know, we just have just continue to build those and go through and see if there's been any changes. But as far as content wise, that has been something that's super helpful to see. Like as people are coming in, they're looking for exactly this thing. Like well, I'm looking for a school that can help support a student in this, this way. And we've been able to lift those answers and directly turn those into things to like, Oh, we're going to answer that. We're going to like, we can use that. And, um, so that, that's one just tactical thing that I think has been really helpful to be able to use. Because sometimes it's hard and you just sit down and you think because you start to think of all these one-offs and, <laughs> and sometimes one thing stands out because it was a louder voice, but it might not be the most popular thing. It might not be what's happening with a lot of people. So I think that's, that's an important way to. Is that, man, I think that's a wonderful idea. Is that a free form response or a select? It's just free form and it's required. Yeah, it's um, it's not required. It's not okay. required, but it is a enter your own. Yeah, enter it's, your it's own. enter your idea. own yeah. short answer response. Yep. So, mm -hmm. but I, t most people answer it. Yeah. So and, it's our last Bre thing. And Brendan, I love that you reminded our listeners or viewers that they don't need HubSpot to do inbound marketing because I think that's a huge misconception. Yeah. Um, that's just a tool that can help you execute some of this content, but there's tons of free tools out there. And I know you're kind of um, a tech junkie when it comes to some of this stuff in terms of, you know, keyword research tools and things like that. I personally love, um, you know, just using Google Trends. It's free, right? If we need help coming up. So, you know, Matt at Chapel Chauncey Hall, they're getting kind of this first party data from their families, but there's also these other tools that can aggregate um, some of these topic uh, ideas. And so, you know, Google um, Trends or Keywords Everywhere. Um, what other kind of tools do you suggest schools use to get started trying to come up, coming up with what is that solve they're trying to have for their prospective families yeah that's um lots of lots of ways to answer i am a geek and i use that as a term of endearment so i love i love the tech aspect of it um uh, it it's a paid tool my tool seo coach but that's paid mm -hmm. there, yeah. there are topics in there it comes up with content ideas but in terms of free tools the google stuff is great google suggests just go into google and probably in an incognito window, just start typing your search and go like slow walk it. And then Google will come up with suggestions, you know? So mm -hmm. those can be great. Um, is it answer the public? Yeah, where That's the me. man's like thinking yeah. and yeah. you type in your, your topic yeah. and it comes up yeah. with all the questions that people yeah. are asking around that topic. I love that yeah. one. Answer the public.com, I think is what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys will link to all these. Um, yeah, yeah. 
And then uh, what was another one? A, a, a free tool that gives you a little stuff is something called Uber Suggest. So ubersuggest.com, it's Neil Patel, who's an SEO. Um, and, and of course you can buy, you know, there's a subscription, but there's a free tool that you can go in there and add some stuff. It'll do, um, you know, some basic keyword research. That's a great place to start as well. I love Neil Patel. I watch <laughs> everything he puts out. Yeah. Um, that reminds me actually your own Google search console, right? Like what are people searching for before they even getting to your website right now? Or where are you ranking? Um, what topics does your website maybe show up, but doesn't get those clicks. So sometimes there's some nuggets in your school's search console itself. Yeah. And, and there are, and I'm sure Angie, you have articles about this because this is your expertise, but like if a school's not using or set up with Google analytics or Google search console or Google business profile, which is the old Google, my business. So they, this, that, that's the th second thing they should do buy the inbound book and then do those three things. Yeah, make, make sure yeah. you have those set up for sure. Cause you're not gonna be able to benchmark any of this success um, without some of it or, or optimize it necessarily if you don't have analytics and search console to really help measure um, this effort. And with school marketers, you know, you need to quantify everything that you're doing, right? Because time is precious. And so if you're going to pull together a team to, you know, execute a blog and come up with this content plan, um, you want to be able to measure it and say, you know, to your head of school, to your board, you know, here's where, where what it's getting us in terms of subscribers, new traffic, um, you know, here's how we're ranking. So yeah, that's a great point. You got to get the analytics established to be able to provide that. Well, it is. And I, again, I've learned this the hard way is that those marketing metrics are great, but here's what I, um, because I've learned the hard way. I encourage schools, uh, if you go to your head of school and share that, uh, he or she, as my head of school, lovingly told me, Brennan, I don't give a, you know <laughs> what, about like how many Facebook fans we have, how many inquiries, how many apps, how many visits. So although that's the gold standard that you have to measure, you need that data we were just talking about to, to see if initiatives work, if they fail. And, and failure is okay because then you can iterate and make things better. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but make sure that you're taking those metrics and tying them to inquiry specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a great point. Uh, I want to just kind of narrow in a little bit when you you talked about, you know, personas. Um, so topic clusters, that's one of the things, is that the term they use in inbound? Uh, <laughs> that was the term they use pillar. There's, there's a few different, but yeah. um Pretty much like what are the areas that you're becoming an expert in and, and putting content out around so i just wanted to see you know for schools in particular um have there been any ways of discovering you know the the right pillars that are bringing in because you know i was just talking to angie about it you know one of the, the challenges i think for a school is depending on what type of school you are if you're a boarding school you're bringing in people from around the country if you're a day school in a certain region, you're trying to bring people in there. So yeah. you could be putting out things that are bringing in people, but you want it to be bringing in people and helping people and also be the type of people who are likely to enroll, inquire and enroll at your school. So do you have any, any um, good examples or techniques on how to find the topic clusters that are going to be helpful to people, but also bringing in the right people? Yeah, let me let me just um, explain or unpack the term a little bit. And, and Angie, I know you're big on this too, but like the the way I think about it is that, or the way I understand it is that um, SEO used to be about keywords, and it still is. So you know, keyword is not going to be like school or private school. It's going to be, you know, uh, in our case, it was Pittsburgh private school. Um, so it could be, you know, a phrase. The problem is, is that you could have hundreds of those and you do have hundreds of those and those are still important. But the, the way search engines are thinking now is that rather than all those keywords, um, uh, you're going to have topic clusters. And then there is a pillar page, which is kind of the it's like the uh, table of contents, so to speak. And then you're going to have all these things around it. So one uh, a marketing example could be if I was going to create a page on my website about inbound marketing for schools. Um, I might have all these topics around or clusters, they call them, that are, remember the five things I just said. So I'm going to write all this stuff about personas. 
all this stuff about keywords, all this stuff about SEO, on and on. And then what you do is you link to the pillar page, which is the table of contents, and then you link back out. That's kind of the high level technical piece of it. For a school, here's how I think of it. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, I think this is an opportunity for a school to uh, uniquely position itself. So think about like those topic cluster, those pillar pages, what are you known for? You know, and if you're, if you're saying small classes and caring faculty, you're done. Like <laughs> we all, that's the joke, right? That's we everyone. all have those. Mm -hmm. and, and so if you are a school that handles learning challenges or you're a single gender school or you're- you know, Montessori. Montessori, Reggio. Reggio, or you have a signature program in ice hockey or soccer, you know, what are those? Those are the big topic clusters, those pillars, and then right around the edges of those pillars. So Montes, you know, Montessori could, I mean, gosh, there's a ton of stuff. Um, right. Reggio, you know, where I think schools have a harder time are those um, day schools that kind of do all things progressive K through eight. It, yep. Yeah, you really got to hone in on what is your unique selling point in terms of your early childhood education approach, or maybe it's something that your school does within its community, or really, I think it goes back to what Matt had said, asking those families, right? Like of the families that go to that school, why yep. are they committed there? And maybe that's when you get some of those pillars. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. It, and it really goes back to, um, you know, again, if you're a school that has those pillars, things that they, you know, it's basically you're putting a flag in the ground. This is what we stand for. And then build around there. It could be progressive education, but what does that mean for you right. versus yep. your neighbor down the street? So if you're, you know, ABC Academy and XYZ Academy is literally two miles away why? Why one over the other? You know, a great exercise that I tell people to do, whether it's their admin team or even the board, is walk in with pieces of paper and pencils and, and pass around the paper and then say, why would, so if you're at ABC Academy, why would someone choose ABC Academy over our biggest competitor? Mm -hmm. Don't let them talk about it. Let them write it down, fold it, come. They don't have to put their names on it. You don't want to embarrass anybody but then read it all. And my hunch is you're, if there's 20 people in the room, you're going to have 18 or 19 different answers. I don't know, 15 different answers. Right. Um, and some of them, you know, someone's going to write small class sizes and that's, you know, that's fine. I, well, I say that if you're going against the public school with huge class sizes, maybe that makes a difference, but. But if it, it's against the other private school, two miles up the road, chances are that's not unique. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. hundred percent. Um, one of the things we did, so you mentioned, you know, like a signature program. So we have skills and academic strategies here at CHCH that we, that we have as a signature program. And one of the things that the teachers do is they're helping with executive function. And so that was one of the things we narrowed in on early when we started to kind of find our cluster, like, okay, so we met with them as a group. And this is actually kind of ties into another question I had as far as like content creation and getting kind of the community to help, like, how can you do that? And so we met with them early on just to say, here's an idea. We think this would be a, a unique way that we can help people. And you're already doing these things in the classroom. You're helping students um, with public speaking. You're helping students take notes in different ways that will help them retain information. So can we put that into an article that will help others? And that was our first series. And, um, you know, in a, a short meeting we had with them, we were able to frame out a year of articles and assign them to different teachers. And they, they, and not even assign them, they are volunteering. They're saying, oh, I'll, I'll write on this one. I can write on how to get involved at clubs. I can write in. So they got excited about it. It turned out to be topics that were really helpful and it tied into everything. So, you know, stuff that we were posting on social media, that we were emailing to our inquiries mm -hmm. and that lived on our blog and became, you know, searchable that was there for us. So, um, as far as that was one successful thing, I think we found in trying to identify what our unique way of coming about the content is. And um, I think it worked well. So um, that's really helpful. Thank you for that info. And, and as far as content creation, so um, it's writing a blog post, creating videos, doing a podcast, whatever you're doing, it's, it's a lot of work. 
Um, and like you said, you know, you got to kind of have others involved and in making sure that it's a community effort. Do you have any, any things you've seen as far as um, helping get these things done um, in a way that's good content, but also um, helping from others in the community and other school community? Yeah, that's here. The, here's the big uh, caveat to inbound. One, it works. When implemented properly, it works, hands down. The two negatives are this. It is not a silver bullet, magic bullet. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just, there's no flip switch. This stuff takes time. Um, it, you know, whether it's content or SEO or whatever, I think about it like an annuity, right? You've got to put all this stuff in. And as long as you keep going, it'll pay out over time. The second thing is, is that you become content producers and inbound is like a, uh, it's an engine that needs fuel and that fuels content and it is constant. You got to stay up on it. So it's work. Um, but the nice thing is at least I know, at least I feel good about the fact that I was doing work that was going to pay off versus some of the other initiatives that, that are, they, well, you can't either measure them or they're does or they're too expensive, whatever. But to answer your question, Matt, getting people to create content is a pain in the butt. Um, and from my own experience, you guys, I love the idea that you guys did. Um, I'm gonna have to look that up, but the, you can talk to people in the summertime, especially faculty. And they're like, oh yeah, Brendan would love to write. This would be great. As soon as the school, uh, school year starts, it's over. And I don't mean that disparagingly to them. I get it. They're busy. They've got stuff. So planning while they're calm is best. But then what we did, we thought about it two ways. We would say, um, what, are the, what's the, what are the topics that we want? So like you guys did and who can write. But then also in terms of, Angie, you said earlier, thought leadership. Who are those people in our faculty that we want to elevate? So what can they possibly write? And we would... Um, I mean, the best way is bribing them. Um, and and you, know, you, got, you, you got to find out what's interesting to them. Is it chocolate? Is it a beer? Is it trading recess duty to just literally give them time? I've done that. So they're like, sure, you know, I'll, I'll watch recess duty for a couple of days if you want to just give me, you know, give me a lump of clay. Just put, just put it down and then we'll finish it up for you. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing that we were doing and liked is, People like to be published. So we would put their photo and their bio and they could see that. And then we're, we're, we're sharing it on our social channels and making sure that we're tagging them or uh, celebrating them. And they like that as well. Um, yep. The other thing you can do, and we, we had supplemented over time, is that we would hire writers um, just to help because... Uh, it, it can be overwhelming. Although, you know, I'm saying all these negative things. If you think about it in terms of frequency, probably once a week is what you're going to need to do. And I would always say this, look, if, if the Marcom person can write once a month, there's one. If your head of school can write once a month, there's two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, a faculty member, three weeks, you know, you're almost there. So it's, I don't want you to get overwhelmed by it, but mm -hmm. I just want you to go in with eyes wide open. I, I hope that is what you were looking for or. No, that's perfect. Yeah. Great tips. And I've, I've found some ways too, um, of reusing things, you know, that we've put in a ton of time into, you know, we put it, we, schools are making magazines and they're putting all these, this work into these articles. And sometimes the magazines live as a PDF on one of the PDF readers on the site, which is not getting any search help in any way for you. So um, I have, you know, that's one of the things that we'll do that we'll go through and we'll see what can be repurposed. It might need to be repurposed a little bit or might need to be, you know, the introduction changed, but the interview, the content, the photos, all that is still there and we can reuse that. So there are, there are cases too, where you can start to see like what can be Mm -hmm. was an intro to our newsletter, this big inspirational intro to our newsletter that can be turned into something else as well. So I think there's like some creative uses in that too, both ways. I, it's a wonderful idea. Repurposing content is, I'm a huge fan. And then the alumni magazine in, in particular, um, we started doing that because, I mean, it's some of the best writing and most researched writing we have. So we would, we would give it a, a cycle and then 
um, start pulling that, especially the alumni profiles. Those are so incredible. So we would post those on the blog. Um, and, and I always felt that that was, that was proof. Like, you know, here's great stuff that our alums have done. So your child can, you know, can be that person as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always a fan of repurposing content in as many free ways as you can. Um, it's a Google My Business post, right? When you yeah. have this blog, it should it could some, depending on the content of the blog, it could be part of your drip campaign for email marketing. It can be a social media post. Um, so there's ways to kind of condense. If you, if you put the work into this blog or, or like you're doing, you know, with the alumni um, newsletter, you know, there's other uh, free channels out there that, you know, this could be your post for that week. Um, even a video. In some cases, you know, we've seen schools trim up this content because they have that quote and because they have that person, it's a quick little five second video snapshot for uh, social media. So repurposing content, you know, it makes this task feel worth it when you're like, okay, here's this blog, but now I've got five different places I can post this. And, and it kind of solved for um, your social media posts for the week or Google My Business posts. Yeah, two, two things that come to mind from that, Angie. Um, one, I, I once read, and I don't have the percentages right, but like you should spend... I did read this once. I, it was like, you should spend 10 to 20% of your time writing the post and then the corresponding 90 to 80 promoting it. Um, because, you know, this is not the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come, you know, yeah. <laughs> hopefully there's some SEO benefit. There will be SEO benefit over time, but you have to promote it. Um, and then the, the second piece, oh, is back to social. <clears throat> One of the things that schools I think do terribly is, uh, well, I'll illustrate this by bringing up another book, Gary Vaynerchuk. I think we've talked about this jab, 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 right hook that, you know, he's a boxing aficionado and the idea is give, 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 and the right hook is sell. So for a school, we're not necessarily selling anything, but it's, it's give, 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 um, make the ask, inquire, mm -hmm. you know, it basically that conversion point, get their email address, uh, inquire, um, attend an open house, blah, blah, blah. And I think blog posts by sharing your blog post um, is an ask because the idea, and this is where schools with blogs screw up a lot or miss an opportunity is probably the better way to say it, is they write a blog post and then at the bottom of the blog post, there's nothing. There's mm -hmm. no call to action. So, you know, you've got to have your inquiry magnet there or whatever, or attend the open house, or you got to have that that call to action so that I share it on social, I drive them back to the blog, they go to the bottom, and then there's the call to action. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the general idea of, of how blogs can be affected. Yep. Got it. Um, that's great. One thing, one thing I would say too, is just as far as content wise is um, not to be afraid to kind of try something different and experiment because especially if there's people who are interested in a certain area on creating something that, that is interesting to them. So just an example we had here um, that we haven't talked about yet is we had a trustee at the school who came to us and said, I really want to write an article, like a thought leadership style article on the future of education and how I think creativity is going to play into the future of education. That didn't fit within our pillars clusters that we had created <laughs> our pillars. We didn't have, you know, these big academic like articles on that. And but. She was super interested in it, was really motivated to do it. And we said, of course, we'll publish it. It's great to say yeah. one of our tricks. That has been our number one article for three years running. And I was just, you know, I was telling Angie recently that, you know, we see month over month without any real work put into it anymore. It just is bringing in two to 400 people a month just on its own. And it's just, and so as far as, you know, kind of a view for people, I think to see, the, the building that you're talking about, sort of like the investing mentality of it is you start, and they're not all that, they're not all hundreds of people. Some of them, a lot of them peak really early and you get a lot when it first publishes and then yep. it sort of trickles. But a lot of them have this like slow, slow growth after. You get yep. a peak when it posts and then you get a slow growth. And then you start to, a lot of that slow growth, many articles and you're stacking articles on top of each other you get to see that build and that that's where it gets really cool to see as you go in and you get to see these articles that were published one, two, three, four years ago are still working and they're still bringing people in and they're still showing up in searches 
and they still have the calls to action on their page. And that to me is like what sold me early on seeing like HubSpot actually displayed that to kind of show an example. I think it was like a pool company that had some example Sheridan, along that, yeah, used to do, yeah. that they used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that kind of was where it clicked for me, I think early on. And uh, it's great to kind of go back and start to see that growth continue and it kind of, it just can kind of, it builds on its own. So, um, but yeah, so asking, you know, examples of experimenting and, and mm -hmm. trustees being another group that, you know, they're excited to be published and to have, and to, to be a part of the school in a different way. Well, I love what you said first, Matt, about experimentation. And, and I fully believe that we, I think baked into that too, uh, is a, don't be afraid to fail. And I think that's what, you know, going back to sharing the inbound book with your boss, your person you report to and talk about that because, you know, I've learned, um, uh, there is no failure in marketing. It's just people don't pay attention. So if people don't pay attention, you know, it's do less of that and do more of the other stuff. So we would throw stuff out all the time. And sometimes they're stinkers. And sometimes like yours, you're like, I don't think it's going to work. And then it works. You're like, oh my goodness. You know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think and those things that work in different ways too, because sometimes it might not work as a inquiry magnet, but it might be a good school spirit thing that, that is making a group of people at the school that did some, like if you share something internally as a school news type thing that happened, likely it's not going to be bringing in a lot of people, but yeah you're making that group of people happy that's seeing it, which is helping in another way. So there are different ways it can succeed, yeah. I would say too. We yeah. worked with a school recently who published a blog thinking it would be more for the current community, but a publication picked it up and said, we love how you're celebrating Arbor Day as a community. And they picked it up in a national publication. So okay. you never know, you know? So <laughs> sometimes what you think is just gonna be a little community, you know, update could end up being pretty big, so. Everybody go write Arbor Day articles right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the takeaway. That's great. That's yeah, great. There you go. That's yeah. it. <laughs> oh, um, Brendan, I, I feel yeah, like we you. could talk to you all day. Yeah. Like there's so much good stuff here. Um, we could probably have a four hour podcast. Um, but to kind of, you know, wrap it up for our viewers, what other kind of final tips or takeaways would you have for school marketers, you know, listening today who are excited? They want to you know, have a strong inbound marketing presence, focus on SEO, write a blog, get everybody together. I mean, it's summer. This is a great time in theory to start kind of getting these plans underway. What final tips would you have for our listeners who want to get going on something like this? Aside from the book. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I would do the, I would do the book and then try to do, do the persona. Okay. Like right now, yep. well, that by the time this airs, they'll have their hair won't be on fire. Uh, you know, they'll have some downtime this summer, but I'd read that book. I I've been huge on SEO that I, I believe, it, I mean, I could, we could talk forever about this and I would bore the heck out of you guys and everybody else. But like, again, I go back to, we spend so much time on social media and it drives like, you know, 2% of traffic to the web. Now there are other benefits to it. I, I do believe it's important, but you think about SEO that would affect organic search, which is, I don't know, half the traffic that you get, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and we have no plan for it at a school. So, you know, in order to do SEO work, though, is you need the persona to think about the keywords and then to do, you know, do search engine optimization. And it's not, it's not black magic voodoo. You know, it, it's it, everybody can do it that's listening to this. Um, yeah. But that, that's where. Well, that's a great point, right? Because your persona is your target audience. And when it comes to generating content, you got to know your audience, right? So it that's makes complete sense. Like you got to start there for sure. Yeah. And, and do that. I would say do that before you jump into the blog and the other stuff. Um, and then the other piece too, is if, and it depends where you are in this, if you have a blog or don't have a blog, you have to think about those conversion points before you start launching a blog. Because I've seen so many schools, hey, we have a blog and they're like, they're just, they're missing the boat and then they don't see the benefit of it. So it becomes a, uh, you know, a negative spiral. And I'm like, no, 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 please, it, it works, it works, but you're just, it hasn't been implemented quite right in terms of inbound. So stuff mm -hmm. to think about, but. 
There we go. There we um, go. So Bren <laughs> Brenna, you mentioned, I mentioned early on, you know, you have um, newsletters and, and you're creating content all the time to help school marketers. So how can people get in touch with you and see the content you're putting out? Where can they find you? Yeah, thanks guys. Um, all the content and everything is really at schneiderb.com. The other place I would love to ha have people or see people at the Marcom Society. So it's the marcomsociety.org and, and it's uh, a place for marketing and communication professionals at schools to have conversations like this. So thanks. That's yeah. great. And what about the and Vercons? you have a job board? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Vercons coming. It'll be in the fall. I'm working on it now. Um, it'll be I was... The the I was a part year. of one. And, yeah. Oh, the 10th year. Oh my goodness. I was a or, part of one. Loved it. Thank you for that experience. I highly that. recommend it to yeah. our listeners. Thanks, yeah. Thanks. Thank so you. the work kind will happen in the fall. Um, and uh, I, Matt, what did you ask? I'm sorry. Oh no. I was just adding a, to Mark on site. You have a job board on there. That's something I've seen. I've seen people sharing, uh, you know, and using to poke because there's a lot of job openings and job so switching not. going on. So that's a, I just wanted to add that that's something I've been seeing and, and going on for. So the yeah, job board. Thanks. The, the Marcom Society is a paid membership. It's not super expensive. I hope people find it valuable, but the, the job board's free. So go, you can post for free. You can look for free. I'm surprised by how many jobs in the Marcom space are open right now. Um, yeah. I don't know if people are just burnt out of COVID uh, and are tapping out or what it is, but there's a lot of activity right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we hope, world. we hope that this, um, podcast upgrade school marketing will be of use to those who've been in marketing roles for a while, or maybe they're, they're new to the school. Maybe they're new to the independent school market in and of itself. So we hope that, um, this has been valuable for our listeners today. And Brendan, I will never get sick of listening to SEO or talking about <laughs> SEO. So I feel like we have to have you on again sometime to really dive into SEO and your <laughs> SEO coach software as well. Thanks, Angie. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. Brendan. So great to talk to you, Brendan. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you. Well, it's always a great conversation with Brendan Schneider. I'm so looking forward to having him on again at different times throughout the year when he can really come in and help um, unpack some other concepts and topics that school marketers might be um, struggling with throughout the year. Yeah, and if anybody you know has any ideas of things you would like either us to talk about or us specifically to talk about with Brendan next time, um, you know, let us know topics you'd like to hear either on social media or um, at info at upgradeschoolmarketing.com let us know and we'd love to you know dig into those topics that people are having questions about so uh thank you so much uh angie again for being here for the conversation and to brendan for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time